Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 14th of September. I'm Aking Brain, I will be your host. We are going to go through our high priority initiatives, other initiatives, and have Q&A, parking lot. What fun. Let's get started. For the high uh, priority initiatives, upcoming and ship releases, we can talk about that. Yeah, so the IPFS 0.7 RC2 went out last week. Uh, that includes a few bug fixes for things. And then we should be on target to release 0.7 this week. Adin, you are muted, but not muted oh, yeah. on Zoom. Yes, uh, as it stands right now, thanks. Uh, the only things that need to go into 0.7 are uh, a web UI update, uh, which is coming soon, and um, like a tiny bug fix. There's a little bit of investigating about like some some performance things, just to like double check that everything is is working exactly as we we think it should. Um, but everything looks good. Excellent. Very exciting. Uh, next up is the pinning services. Yeah, so that's um, that is underway. Uh, we have we have a server that that responds to things. We have an HTTP client that responds to things and sends requests. Um, we have a good chunk of the initial uh, IPFS Go IPFS integration um, done. Uh, sort of enough for for every for folks who are working on this in you know, JS land, uh, in the HTTP client, and in web UI to play around with things. Um, and then we need to go in back, we're, we still need to go and uh, sort of backfill, backfill in all the details. Um, so that's, that's still underway. Things like, uh, like handling key material. which right now is done with environment variables just to like, you know, get things done. Yeah. Uh, on the API spec side, uh, I should uh, make uh, a new version of the spec like tomorrow, probably tomorrow or late to today uh, with uh, recent uh, clarifications to the, um, to the documentation and uh, Actual changes to the spec are we will have uh, more uh, like we will have a, a revamped uh, error responses, and I believe we are decreasing the limit of how many CIDs can be passed in the CID filter, because uh, like CID is effectively like sixty characters. The URL has, can like fit around. 2000 in the web browsers. So it's like not realistic to say it's max 1000 when you can just fit like 10. So uh, we are setting a hard limit to 10 CIDs. And that will make this uh, implementation e easier for pinning services. Uh, if they need to cross check things, then that's just 10 CIDs at the time. Uh, uh, that's about it. I feel we are closer and closer to the point where we are happy with the spec and docs. So that will be uh, a minor release. And uh, the plan is to tag a major 1.0 when effectively Go IPFS ships with a client. Uh, that will be like a milestone for saying, OK, the spec is solid now. Uh, does decreasing the the num the max number of of CIDs to ten do we also state in the spec that like it should just be less than two thousand characters such that if in the future it's if in the future CIDs get big enough such that that crosses the line somehow that we're still backed up there. Well, yeah, we we could uh, add it to the description. Also, like it's impossible to execute <laughs> such query in the run, like browser runtime. So it's like self 
blocked at the well, runtime level, yeah. Well, it's blocked at the runtime level for browsers, but not if someone wants to do this and they're just sending yeah. HTTP requests from like Go or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Someone could like create CIDV1 with SHA-512 now and those will be super long, yeah. Yeah, with that. Neato. Next up is the uh, ED25519 default keys. Yeah, for that and Sec.io, those are both just waiting on the 0.7 release. Um, yeah, and then I still need to add that PR for JS IPFS to get rid of Sec.io. So we'll do that this week. Sweet. Uh, next up is the Rust IPFS initiative. Demos, amazing. Hey, folks. Um, so the last big piece of work was the pinning in DHT that I talked about last week or the week before. So this week was just cleaning up and um, adding some more interop tests and conformance tests and things like that. You're welcome to go and click through those PRs, but it's just a lot of like reorganizing and stuff. So it probably won't be too exciting, but um, a couple of items on the list down there. Uh, there's a couple things to check out for people. There's a substrate plus IPFS tech preview, so you can see how those two things are um, interop. Um, and then uh, we may launched a website called arewe.ipfsyet.rs, which has the enumerated um, conformance tests, and so it's sort of exactly where we're at with things, which I feel like will be useful to people. Um, and then just a side note, um, Gozala, Irakli, uh, we should talk soon because um, OrbitDB is coming out with another version and uh, the next version after that we could potentially target the shared worker but i don't want to go too deep into that right now but i just wanted to note that so that's all for me yeah i'm happy to talk whenever awesome um question about the uh dht in, in rust are you uh implementing anything like autonaut or any any way to be able to tell peers that aren't good that they should not be servers? No, we are not. We're we're piggybacking on top of Rust lib P2P, which does not have AutoNAT yet. So DHT publication is still a problem. Um, but we are we can discover CIDs all day or you know discover content all day. Uh, there is a pull request in uh, Rust the P to P. I'll paste it in there that somebody took a stab at doing up on that. Um, so if you want to nudge that or support that effort, or I don't know, but uh, that's that's sort of the state of things right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just it may be worth considering that until that's done, it might be worth uh, leaving the leaving the DHTs in client mode. Okay. So that we don't end up with like bad nodes again, like we've had in Go for a while. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll pass that request along and we'll, we'll see if we can do that. I don't know that there's any nodes running right now, but you know, we're just in our testing and stuff. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, just like more of a, just like a future looking thing for network integration. For sure. Awesome. Next up is the uh, JSP discoverability and connectivity. That's cool. Hey folks, so uh, regarding the outro relay part of things, uh, I basically addressed uh, Jacob's review from uh, my initial PR with initial implementation. It should be mostly ready, just needs a final review from Jacob. Then I started doing uh, some follow-up PRs uh, on that with uh, uh, the extensibility to other stuff like uh, a PR for updating the network once a new listen address exists. This basically needs to identify push but we also needed to update the self-signed peer hacker, which we were, weren't doing before when the multi-other updates. And uh, it's also ready, uh, that PR, but I'm waiting for the first one to get merged before asking for a review. Then I'm currently working on uh, the last part of the auto relay, which is basically to find remote relays. If we don't have enough uh, peers connected that offer the relay according to what we want, or if we, don't have any of them in the our peer store as well persisted. 
So basically for finding a remote relays, I'm uh, uh, basically inspired, inspired by the GoLipidP discovery module. Uh, so the goal is to have a uh, service discovery which uses uh, content routing, rendezvous discovery and other things in the future, where basically the goal is to peers to register offering a certain namespace service and then you, you can find the service in the network and you'll get the peers that offer this service and then you can dial them if you want and in this case you basically bind to them to, for them to be also out early for you. Uh, this basically seemed easier for me first, but then I realized that I needed to do some changes in the in the circuit transport, and I'm now decoupling it uh, from the service itself, because, for example, we want uh, the relay service to have a lifecycle message such as the start and the stop, so that we can, uh, in the start of the relay service, do this provide thing saying, "Yeah, I'm a, a relay, so you can." ask me to relay stuff for you if you want and uh, in the transport as we basically fulfill the interface transport it was not uh, the most uh, good approach uh, yeah so that's my current point in uh, in the auto relay and uh, i hope i will finish uh, over the next two or three days all the work in progress stuff for this and after that i aim to start the connection manager overall epic which is also linked in the notes and that's it. I'll make sure to give the uh, auto relay review again um, by tomorrow. Thank you. Cool. That rounds off the uh, main initiatives. Um, moving on to the other initiatives, uh, I'm going to skip over the subdomain gateway and the Unix of SV 1.5 and GoIPFS before, because there is no update of those initiatives. Um, so, Gazala, do you want to tell us what's going on with the DAG service? Um, nothing really. Uh, I've been doing other stuff, so that's on a back burner. Um, web UI file, I think it's there's one pull request that it's kind of uh, stuck on and it's waiting on something else that I can't quite remember what I think on changes to the go IPFS uh, HTTP server and I think after that we can land it um, I haven't had time to add another item but I'll talk about it and then on later uh, so I start uh, taking over some of the TypeScript work from Hugo um, so there's a giant pull request that I sent to Alex um, it's mostly comments, so it should be not so bad, but there are a few changes that were required because uh, as we start generating type docs, it starts to figure out some of the issues that we were not aware of. So there's a little bit of that, but the rest is just comments. Um, yeah, so I'll be focusing on that this week to try to get through. I promise I will get to that. I will, not even I will get to it, I promise we'll get that merged by the end of the week because it's monster. Um, but yeah, it does. It looks great. Cool. That is it for the uh, other initiatives. Um, so moving on, uh, design review proposals. Anybody want something bike should have did? Cool. Uh, blockers and asks. Uh, there are a number of, of tests that I want to do before the GoIPFS release, uh, including things like the ArbitDB test uh, and NPM on IPFS that if I could get some backup on would be excellent. Um, yeah, if anyone's got time, if anyone's got time for that would be, would be much appreciated. Dean, I, I might be able to help you with that. Let's, uh, let's talk. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, feel free to pin me about the NPM on IPFS stuff as well. Uh, so, questions? Anybody got any questions? You also need answers if there are questions. Parking lot? Anything that doesn't fit in any of the above categories? 
I guess uh, a thought that I had that I, I posted to some IPLD folks recently was that it might be interesting for us to uh, have, for us to have a way to uh, have identifiers for content that are much longer than than just the multi hash, and that they include like we'll call it more complicated cryptographic proofs. Um, I'm thinking of this in the context of the folks who want to add Git repos with like, you know, 100 megabyte blocks in them through IPFS, but it won't work because like we won't process blocks bigger than a megabyte. But in order to restructure the data, now all the hashes change. And so like there are various proofs you could construct, but it's not clear how we would actually convey those, like how we would actually move them around even once you figure out how to construct the proofs. Um, so if that is something you're interested in, then uh, IPLD channel might be a place to, to discuss that. Who do you draw by if you are interested? Okay, if there's nothing else, uh, then we can call this meeting closed. Everybody gets 10 minutes back or 11 minutes. Amazing. Uh, thank you very much for coming, everyone. This has been the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 14th of September. Be good, stay safe, see you on the internet. Bye. Bye. Bye.